Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today we're going to be comparing the PlayStation 5 to the Xbox Series X and S, and seeing which one is best for you and which one offers the best overall gaming experience. I did a similar video about three years ago when they first launched, but since then quite a lot has changed. We'll go over things like games, features, specs and accessories, so if you're not sure which one to buy or maybe you just want to see what the other console has to offer, hopefully today's video will help you out. Now before we jump in, tell me which of these you currently own or which one you think is the best console right now. Okay, so it's safe to say that these two look very different and which one you prefer comes down to personal preference. The PS5 is tall, slim and stands out, while the Xbox Series X is short, chunky and is pretty minimal by comparison. At launch, I can actually remember people flat out refusing to buy a PS5 based on its looks alone. It was a lot bigger than the PlayStation 4 and the design was totally different to what we'd seen before. Whereas the Series X looks familiar, it's just a black rectangle box that sort of blends into any setup. And it's really only when you put the three consoles side by side do you realise how much bigger the PS5 is, especially alongside the Series S. I mean, I've got a PS5 on my desk here and another one under my TV. And these look absolutely fine as there's plenty of space for them. But if you've got a tighter space, maybe on your shelf or next to your TV, the Xbox might be the better fit. Like in my kitchen, for example. I've opted for the Series S in here as it's tiny and it will fit on the unit, whereas the PS5 just would not fit. Now of course we do have the slimmer PS5 launching this month, which is smaller than the original PS5 by about 30%, but is still taller than the Series X and Series S. And then there's the customization side of things. By default the PS5 comes with these white plates, but after 3 years we have got loads of other options to choose from, including both official and unofficial covers. This means if you don't like the look of the PS5, you can literally swap these covers out in a matter of minutes. You could change the covers to black, or maybe purple, or even the new Spider-Man 2 covers. Or there are the D-brand plates which technically make the PS5 that little bit smaller with the rounded edges. As for Xbox, we currently have the Black Series X, a White Series S and the new Carbon Black Series S. These don't have removable panels but there are third party skins that you can buy, or you can buy one of the new official console wraps. So far we've seen the Mineral Camo and one for Starfield. And these aren't vinyl either, these are solid panels that wrap around and velcro onto the back. So it is great to see that both consoles have customization options if you want to change the look. Right, let's talk about games. So on the whole, both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox have about 99% the same games. You know, games like Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed and Mortal Kombat. It wouldn't matter which console you went for, you can pretty much play them all. But there's still one thing that sets them apart from one another and that's the exclusives. Those games that are only available on one of the two platforms that you cannot play on the other. Now some of these games you will find on PC as well, but that's not what we're talking about today. So on the Xbox we've got some great games including Forza Horizon 4 and 5, which are those open world arcade racing games. These are a lot of fun and one of my all time favourite Xbox games right now. We also have Forza Motorsport, the Gear series, Halo and Flight Simulator. And then there's the big one that we've recently had which was Starfield. And this has been awesome to play and one of the best exclusives that we've seen this year. As for the PS5, there are exclusive games that I personally think will sell consoles, and for me these games are incredible. Games like Horizon Forbidden West, God of War, Demon's Souls, Ratchet and & Clank, and a little game you might not have heard of is Spider-Man 2. And those are just the recent games. We've still got the older PS4 games that you can catch up on, games like The Last of Us and Days Gone. Of course, the games that you consider to be the best will be different from mine, which is why it's important to check the full list of games that you're most likely to play. If you know you want to play the Horizon games, you'll likely lean towards the Xbox. But if you really wanted to play the Spider-Man games, well, you'll likely go for the PS5 instead. Okay, so we know there are loads of next-gen games to play, or games that are available on both new and last-gen. But what about backwards compatibility? If you're coming from an older Xbox or PlayStation, can you still play your old library? Well, the short answer is yes you can, for the most part. On Xbox, you can play almost your entire library of games from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One, as well as the original Xbox. That's both digitally and via disc. So if you wanted to play an old Viva Pinata game from your 360, well, you can. The same goes for old Forza and Call of Duty games. And it actually emulates the games, which means you get to see the old boot-up screens and logos, which is pretty cool. So if you do have a collection of old games that you wanted to keep playing, there's nothing stopping you from playing these on the Series X. The PS5 on the other hand doesn't offer full backwards compatibility in terms of PS1, PS2 and PS3 games, but it does allow you to play your PlayStation 4 games both digitally and via disc. In fact, Sony have confirmed that out of the nearly 4,000 PS4 games available, only 6 don't work, so it's easier to show you the games that don't work as opposed to the ones that do. 
This means you can play Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, GTA 5 and Horizon Zero Dawn. It does however mean that you cannot play any of your PS2 or PS3 games which would have been awesome to have seen, unless you subscribe to PS Plus which I will cover in a minute. Now let's be honest, the backwards compatibility is only useful if you already have a library of games that you want to keep playing, or if there are older games that you just wish to revisit. On the whole though, I think most of us will only play the current or the last gen games. Anything further back is more likely for nostalgic reasons. The Xbox definitely offers the better backwards compatibility offering if that's what you need. Now I just wanted to very quickly mention the TV and the monitor that I'm using for gaming. I know a lot of you ask what I'm using in the comments whenever I show them. So on my TV setup I'm using the 77 inch LG G3 OLED and on my desk I'm using the 27 inch LG Ultra Gear 27 GR95QE. They are both OLED screens and have 120Hz, VRR and HDMI 2.1 so they look awesome on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I have linked to both of these screens below along with the other items in my setup including the desk and the chair but out of all of the monitors that I've used Used over the last year, this is still my favourite. So both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox have a massive selection of first party and third party accessories. You only have to walk into your local game store to see the shelves packed with controllers, headsets, charging docks and so on. And to be honest, they both offer a very similar experience if you're looking for the basics. Take headsets for example, there are both Xbox and PlayStation branded ones, as well as ones from Astro and SteelSeries. You can get pretty much any accessory you want now for either console. But there are a couple of accessories that do set the two apart, and the first one is PSVR 2. This is PlayStation's second generation of their virtual reality headset, and this thing is incredible. It's not cheap though, as it's almost the same price as the PS5 itself, but it offers a whole different experience when it comes to gaming. You can obviously play those dedicated VR games, or games that have had a VR update, or you can play normal non-VR games and use it like a huge cinema screen instead of a monitor or a TV. Of course you could also pick up another VR headset like the Meta Quest 3, although this won't allow you to play your PlayStation or your Xbox games. And then the other accessory worth mentioning even though at the time of uploading today's video hasn't released yet is the PlayStation Portal. Now this is PlayStation's handheld portable device that allows you to stream and play your games away from your setup. The biggest advantage is it provides the same controller experience as the DualSense, so we get the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. But the only downside is this does need to be remote connected to your PS5 in order to play the games. I'm hoping in the future this does get an update to allow you to stream the games from the cloud instead, but until then it will just be a remote play device. And talking about controllers, this is another area that sets the two consoles apart. I said this three years ago at launch, but the Xbox controller is nearly identical to that of the previous gen. You could say if it's not broke, why fix it? But this means it immediately feels familiar to the older Xboxes. One downside to this controller though is it still uses AA batteries. It might not be an issue for most, but I feel like batteries should be built in. On the plus side though, these controllers last for about 30 to 40 hours, which is incredible. The PS5's controller on the other hand is on a whole different level. We've got a gyro built in for those games that support it. Haptic feedback so you can feel the rumbles and vibration from different terrain in games as you play. And the adaptive triggers. These react and respond to what you're doing in a game. Whether that's using a throttle in GT7 or pulling an arrow back in Horizon Forbidden West. You can feel the resistance in the trigger which adds a whole different experience. It also has a speaker and a microphone built in. So you can chat with your mates or use the in-game features straight through the controller. But with all of those features it does come at a cost, and that's the battery life. I can only get around 10 to 12 hours out of a single charge, which is enough for a single day's use, but it just means you probably need to charge it almost daily to ensure you have enough. But the fact it's got rechargeable batteries built in is a good thing. As for different controllers available, well they both have a great selection of official controllers to pick up. Xbox has some including the 20th anniversary and the Starfield Limited Edition, along with standard solid colours, or you can go onto the design lab and make your own. The PS5 also has these limited edition controllers like the Spider-Man 2, God of War, Hogwarts Legacy, or they have a wide selection of colours to choose from, like Midnight Black, Nova Pink and the Grey Camo, or the two new ones that have just launched including the Volcanic Red and Cobalt Blue. And as mentioned earlier with the swappable console covers, you could buy a controller and a set of plates to match. And then there's the Pro controllers which both the Xbox and PlayStation have spent some serious time creating. Both the Elite Series 2 and the DualSense Edge gives us rear paddles, adjustable trigger stops and swappable parts. What they've done is take the original design and feel of the base controllers and have made them even better. Now which one is best kind of comes down to which one you prefer holding. 
and for me it has to be the DualSense with the symmetrical sticks, size and the adaptive triggers. This controller is on a whole different level. But whichever console you go for, you can buy pretty much any controller or headset you want, even third party controllers like the Victrix Pro or the Scuf variants. Okay, let's talk about PlayStation Plus and Game Pass Ultimate. These are the monthly subscriptions that are available on both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox to give access to games and certain services. Firstly, Game Pass gives us a library of hundreds of games, including those on the Xbox catalogue and some from other publishers as well. We get the usual games like Halo or Forza Motorsport, but we also get games like Football Manager 2024 and even Payday 3. Some of these games are on PlayStation as well, but the fact they are included in Game Pass at no extra cost is incredible. On top of that, most of these games are available on release day as well. Take Payday 3 for example. This was a £35 game on the PS5, but it's included in Game Pass at no extra cost. Same goes for Lies of P. This was a £50 game on the PS5, but it came out on release day on Game Pass again at no cost. I think over time we'll be seeing more and more games added on day one, making Game Pass incredibly strong for new games that you'd normally find on both platforms. Especially with the recent acquisition of Activision. I mean, should we expect to see all future Activision games like Call of Duty on here? And if so, that would be awesome. And then there's PlayStation Plus. This also offers a huge library of games that you can download or stream, including Spider-Man Mars Morales, Returnal, and Horizon Forbidden West. Now on PlayStation, there are three different plans to choose from. There's Essential, which gives us the online multiplayer and our monthly games. Extra gives you the game catalog and Ubisoft classics, and the premium plan, which gives you game trials, the classic catalog, and cloud streaming. Today, I'm comparing Game Pass Ultimate to the premium plan as they offer a very similar service. Now before we were talking about backwards compatibility, well this is the only way you can play those PS1, PS2 and PS3 games. There aren't thousands of games like we had back in the day, but there are a few in here that you might be interested in playing. Ideally though, I would like to see the entire catalogue of games from the PS1 and PS2. Games like Bully, The Getaway and even Driver. Proper classic games that I used to play. Oh, and not forgetting that PlayStation very recently added the Sony Pictures Core to the premium tier, so we now get about 100 movies included at no extra cost, plus discounts on other Sony Pictures movies. And as for the cost of these, well, Game Pass Ultimate comes in at about £155 per year, while PS Plus Premium is about £120 per year. If you're wanting those day one releases on Xbox, well, Game Pass is really hard to beat right now. But on both platforms, you only need to download about two or three games, and you've pretty much got your money's worth for the entire year. Another factor worth considering is being able to play these games away from your setup. Xbox Cloud Gaming allows you to play games via your browser, TV app, mobile phone and any portable device. Take the Logitech G Cloud. You can literally play your library of Game Pass games anywhere you have an internet connection. PlayStation also offers remote play but at the moment is not the same offering as Xbox as you do need to stream and remote play your games directly from the PS5. This means you need your PS5 on for it to work, and you're essentially sharing your screen. In recent months with the addition of PS5 game streaming, I'm really hoping that PlayStation will allow you to stream your games to the new PlayStation portal without the need of using your PS5, in which case it will be a very similar offering to cloud gaming on Xbox. And then we have the performance and specs of the two. So on paper, they offer a very similar experience with the CPU, GPU and RAM, although the Xbox Series X is technically more powerful, with 12 teraflops versus the PS5's 10.3. But in reality, they offer an almost identical gaming experience. They both support up to 4K, 120Hz, VRR and HDR, plus the games are incredibly fast at loading. But the Xbox has a quick resume feature that allows you to jump between multiple games nearly instantly, carrying on from where you last played. This is a seriously great feature that makes swapping so much easier and less time consuming. And storage is another one. So the PS5 currently comes with 825 gigabytes, while the Xbox Series X has one terabyte. Why the PS5 didn't just include one terabyte is beyond me, but at least the upcoming slimmer version will come with a one terabyte driver standard. But of course you can expand both of these. So on the Xbox, you can either plug in an external SSD or one of these expansion cards. The advantage of one of these is you can store and play your Xbox Series X game straight from it, and you can even move it from console to console. And the same applies to the PS5. You can plug an external SSD in the back of the PS5, or you can install an additional internal SSD drive and play your PS5 game straight from it. I've used some from Corsair, Western Digital, and Crucial, and to be honest, they all do the same job. As for the dashboard and UI, well they are both 4K and have a tile format of the games that you've recently played. They also have these huge wallpapers for each game that you're playing as you navigate through. From a dashboard and a user experience point of view, you can't go wrong with either. 
The same goes for the settings, quick menus, party chat and messages. Maybe it's because I'm used to them, but both systems are pretty user friendly. They both also have their own trophy and achievement features, where we get trophies by unlocking challenges or tasks and games. Which one is better is definitely personal preference, although there's something about getting a platinum in a game that I really like. They both also have dedicated apps for your phone. On Xbox you can view your friends, chat with them and check your achievements, whereas on PlayStation it does all of that and you can search for games in the store, purchase and download them straight to your PS5. I do quite like using these apps though as it tells me when my mates are online or when I'm invited to a party without having to boot up the consoles first. And the thing is, over the last few years we've had so many great updates for both the PS5 and Xbox that they are very different to launch day. For example, the PS5 didn't have VRR or 1440p support at all, and this was added at a later date. And the Xbox dashboard looked totally different and wasn't even in 4K. And what that means is after nearly 3 years, both consoles are far better than they were. In fact, they are getting better every time a new update is pushed. Ok so we've looked at the games, monthly subscriptions, console designs, specs, accessories and loads more. And after all of that, which one do you think is the best overall package or which console would you pick as your go to platform? Now Xbox and Game Pass Ultimate bring us an incredible offering for those day one releases, and games like Forza and Starfield, plus the fact that you can pick up either a Series S or X depending on your budget and available space is great. But the PS5 has things like PSVR 2, the PlayStation Portal, the DualSense features and games like Spider-Man, God of War and the upcoming Wolverine, which makes this a really strong package as well. Now for me it comes down to three things, which exclusive games you wish to play, which controller you prefer and where your friends are. I think the games and the controller differences alone are enough to sway you one way or the other, and then the other extras just sweeten the deal, but where your friends are could be the single deciding factor. Sure we can play most games with our mates on different consoles and even PC, but it's definitely easier to do them on the same platform. Now obviously I've got both and if I had to choose one right now which one would I go for? I would probably go for the PlayStation 5. Now the Xbox would be the no brainer choice for cost saving with those games releasing on Game Pass on day one, but I just cannot give up those PlayStation exclusives. Now of course that's just me, what about you? Which one would you pick and why? Remember there is no wrong answer and there is no console war here. Ideally, having both means you get to play everything. Now drop a PS5 versus Xbox in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out this video next. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me everywhere. Until next time.